Boom. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Serious Ventures uh, podcast. I'm super excited about the story. I, right before jumping on this recording, I was talking to Balaram Das, and he is one of the most, I'm mind boggled by, by everything he just shared with me from his story to how he got into the financial uh, literacy space and, 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 you know, how he has taken it to another level, a very profound deep level that I will l let him explain in depth. But guys, listen to the, to, to the very end of this interview. So you guys learned some very crazy stuff. Thank you, Balaram, for, for showing up. Thank you for sharing your time, brother. Appreciate it. Um, you know, every time I bring on someone on, to, on, the, on the podcast, on the channel, I get excited and excited. Every, you know, each person brings something very valuable. And with you, man, just before jumping on this call, you were sharing your story. It, it just shocked me all the great knowledge that you have and how some people can use it for the betterment of humanity. And, you know, better, that includes improving ourselves first. But I'll let you do the deep dive. Um, if you want to get started with sharing with people a little bit about your background, right? How you get started, how you got started in the journey. Sure. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for having me on your show. Uh, I really do enjoy telling this story. I've told this story a million times and it never gets old. I always learn something new from it. So uh, just so everyone knows what I'm doing now, right now I, uh, I run a credit repair business called the Credit Repair Experts. We use law you know, as our means of finding remedy for people and helping them get that second chance. And then uh, I run a, uh, I just launched or I acquired the domain for a new organization called beyourownbusiness.org. And essentially the name that you have, and I can prove this because the name that you have on your birth certificate, that name on your driver's license, the name that's spelled in all caps that was given to you at birth, is actually a business entity. That's the best way to think about it. And you can get a DBA from the state of Minnesota. You can get basically paperwork proving that uh, that name is a business organization. And then you can go all the way to creating a trust using that name and putting all of your property and assets underneath that. And I help people uh, get to that stage. And I know that's a fact because uh, this last couple months, the SBA released that PPP loan grant. And I helped about 20 to 30 individuals get that PPP loan just using their name as a business. Which so, is supposed to be for business owners and they have to comply with some requirements in order to not pay it, right? Is that correct? That's correct. They have to use payroll. So they have to, they have to pay. It's the Paycheck Protection Program. So you just say that your name is a trust, which it is. Right. And I can prove that maybe in future episodes because it gets a little technical, yeah. but it is a trust and you're paying since you're the trustee of the trust, meaning you're the managing director of the trust, you're the one paying yourself payroll. Yeah. And so you can qualify for the loan. And then here in July, we will qualify for the forgiveness. So that that's where I'm at right now. And so that's crazy. Like I've, I've seen it. I've heard it. You know, people say, you know, start your own business and then put yourself in payroll. But ha seeing it that way as your name on your birth certificate being a business name, it's pretty crazy. It's really amazing. Like a, a different percep perception, in my opinion. I never saw it that way, but it really can get that. And, and you were sharing some more stuff, so I'll let you go. I'm not yeah. the most well known. <laughs> That's okay. So, um... It all started when I was very young. I was, I'm not like most, I was not like most children. Uh, I was hyper-focused. My father was an architect. He built me a desk and I was homeschooled and I would just sit at my desk all day. And my mom would get mad at me because I would finish a whole year's worth of school in like three months. You know, I would get like, there's a point where she had to like, watch me and make only is allowed to do two to three hours of school a day no more and so because she didn't want me to get too far ahead i was very very abnormal very hyper focused child. very good problem i wish i had <laughs> yeah. and so uh 
uh, my father was a, a architect for the General Service Administration. Um, but he also had an occupation that involved combat. And so, but, and it wasn't uh, known to the public. Okay. And because of that, he was part of the big epidemic opiate crisis that we had uh, back in the, the 2000s, right? Especially Oxycontin. And dad, if you're watching this, I hope I'm representing you, you know, in a good way, but your story really made me the man who I am. So, you know, I mean this in a positive way, but he was completely hooked on this substance. And because of that, he had to, uh, to satisfy his, uh, his body. He had to uh, forge a doctor's signature because he ran out of the substance. And so when he did that, he got reported on by the pharmacist and got charged by the, uh, the Georgia Court of, of Criminal Procedure, um, a felony case of perjury for forging a doctor's signature. And so when he got sentenced, I visited him in jail. And when I visited him, I was eight years old at the time, and I asked him, I said, what happened, Dad? He said, I tried to get my medicine, but I didn't have a signature. So I made one up and they uh, arrested me and they charged me with it. When I asked him, I said, well, why don't you just give him the medicine back? He said, unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. Son. I said, well, then how does it work? And he said, to tell you the truth, I do not know. And so I went home and we had dial up internet. We had Apple PC at the time. Right. And I looked up on People PC on Wikipedia, what is a court, what is a judge, what is a crime, all these things that my mom and other people are telling me what happened. And I look it up and I see, okay, so the judge decides what happens to my dad. So if I become a judge, you know, my eight-year-old logic's like, if I do that, then I can get him out. No problem. And so I start, you know, how to become a judge. And so I meet with my father's judge for his case and I asked him I say how do you become a judge he said you have to become an attorney first I said okay no problem and I started doing my research on that and I was told that the attorneys have to know the constitution right so I'm like okay and I read the constitution and you read the the amendments and the bill of rights and it says in the 13th amendment that attorneys are not allowed to be elected officials and judges must be elected. So I was confused. I think I was around nine or 10 when I found this out. And I asked my mother, I said, mother, how, why did that judge tell me to become an attorney when attorneys are not allowed to become judges? And is that judge an attorney? She said, look, son, the government is corrupt and doesn't work how it's supposed to work, right? They do what they want to. And I got, I got angry. So uh, as I got older, I started researching. I'd always, you know, we grew up Baptist, so I read the Bible a lot. And I, I, I watched court proceedings and I watched all the movies and stuff like that. And I saw how very ceremonial and symbolic it all was. Mm -hmm. And then in high school, I, you know, I have to admit, dude, these algorithms on Facebook and YouTube and stuff, they really have brought me some information I would have never thought possible. Right. Because... I got on my like feed this video because I've been looking up stuff on law and I got a video about how the birth certificate is really a, a evidence of a trust and a registration for property. It re it's registering property. When you're born, there's something called, you have two documents called, you have the certificate of live birth and the birth certificate. Okay, the certificate of live birth has all the actual birth records on it. When you were born, your weight, what you look like, all this stuff. Oftentimes it has the sole of the baby's foot stamped on it, right? This is where the whole, the whole symbolic language comes in that they take your soul. They're really stamping that you put your foot, you don't put your foot on land. The first thing you put your foot on is on paper. And so when that happens, you're registered as property within the United States government or whatever government you were a part of when you were born. 
and then your parents signed an affidavit of paternity, basically claiming to be your custodian. And if you look up the word custodian, it means somebody who looks after property on someone else's behalf. So their parents are looking after property on behalf of the state. And they've given away freely the children, especially those who are married. A marriage license, right? Licenses to do business. You need licenses to be cut hair. You need licenses to be a contractor. You need licenses to drive trucks, right? So a marriage license is to do business. And the principal activity of business in a marriage is children, right? And so the children are given away. And so um, when this happens, you're assigned a social security number and an account is created under your name and they actually create transactions and bonds and securities under this account without your knowledge. And so when you get older and you start, you know, you get a driver's license and you go get a house and you do all these things, you keep registering, you, you register your car with the DMV, you keep registering all your property with the government it actually belongs to them. So then when you go to court, they're not charging you the flesh and blood man, they're charging the corporate entity that's on your documents. Like for an easy example, right? Just off the top, do you think this is me? Uh, no, it doesn't look like you now. <laughs> I, well, I... right, but let's let's test something, okay? Because a lot of people think this is them, right? And let's say I had the picture of myself right now on here. Right. Okay, I'm going to put it down. Hey, Brendan, I need you to go get me a glass of water. <laughs> Why are you ignoring me? You see how dumb I sound? But in court, they're pointing at this piece of paper and going, are you Brendan Jackson Jones? The word you is not a real word, my friend. I know that sounds weird, but the word you is not real. You is three vowels put together and it's plural. And it means anybody who owes a debt to the United States that's out of title 26. Man. <laughs> so when they're asking you, do, are you this name? They're asking you, are you the surety for the, for the corporation, this corporate fictional entity on paper, right? If you've ever read a book, all the characters are fictional entities on paper. That's, that's basically what it is. It's called a persona. Right. That's where the word person comes from. Okay, and so I started learning this information and putting the pieces together. And then in 2019, my father gets arrested again for verbal assault of the elderly, a, a felony charge in Colorado. So I drive to Colorado and do something very simple. Most courts today are not judicial courts. They're operating under Article I of the Constitution, which is the legislature. Legislature regulates business and commerce between states. Okay. Okay. So if you were to ask the IRS for the tax information on the courthouses, they would either be non-tax exempt for-profit organizations or a 501c3 registered nonprofit, oftentimes owned by the judge or the clerk. So they're operating as a either a nonprofit or a for-profit business, and their principal means of earning money is through bonds, right? So whenever you go to jail, you bond out, right? Right. But that's not the only bond that's created. They also create a payment bond, a surety bond, a bid bond, and a performance bond. Okay, and these bonds are not on public record. They're part of the private record because they're really private organizations pretending to be public. Mm -hmm. And so they have to file the taxes on all the bonds, which they do not do. Otherwise, they'd be admitting on the public record that they're doing for-profit business disguised as a judicial place. <laughs> well, I go to the courthouse and write a one-page letter to the judge asking him to file the taxes 
and to do it, what's called a forensics accounting, meaning you need to take me to the back and show me everything that's on file for the case, everything. And so when I give the clerk this letter, she runs back to the judge's chambers as fast as she possibly can. And the judge comes out and is like sweating, saying, who wrote this letter? I will not allow violence in this courtroom. And I go, what violence? And then he switches real quick and says, you can't represent your father. You're not a licensed attorney. And I go, well, I have never seen an attorney's license in my life. And I called the licensing commissioner and they do not issue out licenses to practice law. So if you could show me yours, then I will decide whether I'm a licensed attorney or not. And he just got really mad. And when I asked him if it was a court of record, which I did three times in court, there's a special thing where they, they say your name three times and you don't respond, then you're in dishonor and you become the debtor, the one that takes the fall for the charge. So I asked him if it was a court of record three times. And after the third time, he presses the panic button underneath his desk and they drag me out of the courthouse. And so after that, they run through all the cases very quickly. And then they bring my dad out with the public defender. And the public defender does her spiel that my dad's a great guy and he's a good citizen, shouldn't be arrested, blah, blah, blah. Well, the judge just ignores everything that she says and just looks to my dad and says, Russ, I will let you go if you promise not to do it again. And my dad is just like, yeah, sure, whatever. He doesn't even know I'm there. He's like, yeah, 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 sure, whatever. And so they let him go. And when they let him go, um, they follow me around town all week, waiting to see if I'm going to file the taxes in the IRS office or not. Simple enough. Thank you. But, I gotta take off, brother. So yeah, thanks bye. for coming, man. Yeah, no problem. Um, I was gonna about come over this weekend, but family's coming down, so maybe. So, um, yeah, they follow me around all week, seeing if I will file the taxes. But I just wanted my dad out of jail. Right. I really feel like doing all the paperwork. I can do it. Now. I could do it. You could do it anytime. Okay. Any. There is no statute of limitations on fraud. So um, after that event, that's when I told myself and low-key kind of told everyone else, told you so, it's real. I knew it. And so I rode with it after that. And I dedicated my life. I had a landscaping business at the time. I slowly started drifting away from that and started helping people with their uh basically with everything that that deals with this subject because it's not just money right mm -hmm. money as we know it today is not real it's right. just it's just digits in an account yes sir and so this will be literally known. great so the federal reserve means, is is you got anything to say about that is it a private entity is it a public entity? oh absolutely yes it is Right. Now, uh, in fact, the United States is a corporation. It's a corporate corporation registered under the Depository Trust Company, which is a subsidiary for the Federal Reserve Bank. So the Federal Reserve owns the Depository Trust Company. The Depository Trust Company holds the United States Incorporated as one of its assets because the United States Incorporated is bankrupt. And I have the, the United States bankruptcy charter, meaning I have their bankruptcy paperwork. Mm -hmm. So there's no doubt that it's definitely a corporation. <laughs> and, yeah, all the states are also. And so um, that, you know, that brings me back to today. Today, I had court for two resisting arrest charges. Because back in March, um, to make a long story short, Tarrant County Court and CPS tried to kidnap my stepdaughter. Um, there was a misunderstanding with the, the actual biological father. And, uh, you know, people started coming into my house or trying to break into my house and take my stepdaughter. 
And so I filed a lot of paperwork basically exposing the commercial nature of what they're doing and the child trafficking that they're doing. So if you, um, if you read the word child in Black's Law Dictionary, it means a term of purchase. So I'll just leave it at that, that it's also commercial. And so I exposed that. And when I went to court on the 26th of March, the actual judge who I had held in default for not paying the taxes on that mm -hmm. swaps with a retired judge. And that retired judge holds me into contempt to stop filing paperwork. And so he held me in jail for two weeks. And I was filing letters left and right. And the actual district judge brought me in his chambers privately and let me out after two weeks. And then I'm still fighting, you know, I wouldn't really call it fighting, but, you know, everything I believe happens according to God's will. But they, they separated my family and told my fiance that I was a crazy lunatic cult leader and that if they, if she talks to me, she'll never get to see her daughter again. And so I'm watching the case from afar because there are some nefarious people involved in that case that want nothing but ill will for her and her daughter, you know, including the court. But, but that being said, I was also charged criminally with resisting arrest because I refused to be arrested in court until I was told the nature and cause of the action and why I was being arrested. That's and so insane. That's insane. they 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 had a court hearing for resisting arrest. I file a motion of appearance, or I'm sorry, I file a, a notice of special appearance and a a, a a injunction to stop the case. And when in in court, you can file paperwork and make an appearance. You don't have to show up there in live man. You can show up with your paperwork. But they ignored the paperwork and issued out a fake warrant for my arrest. And in uh, May 23rd, I get tackled by the uh, North Richmond Hills Marshal. And he says, we have a warrant for your arrest. And I go, okay, show me the warrant. And then he's pretending like I'm resisting him. And he's like, stop resisting. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm literally on the, my face on the ground. I'm like, I'm not resisting. I just need to see the warrant. I just can't take your word for it that I have a warrant. And his partner's like, tase him. I'm like, you don't need to tase me. I'll let you arrest me only because you're making me. But I have to see the warrant. I never saw the warrant. I asked the magistrate. They didn't have it. They booked me back to Tarrant County. They didn't have it. I got released, went to the courthouse that morning, also didn't have it. So they're in a violation of due process. So today we had a hearing. And guess what? The judge is on vacation today. And I had another uh, sitting judge in. And they brought me into court. And I have this. We're going to reveal this. I have the audio recording. I snuck it in. And uh, one thing they do in court is they have like, you ever been to court before? No. Only once. So right? You watch the TV show? Yeah. You know how there's like a there's a place where people watch and then like you open like a little door? Yeah. And then there's like the defendant and the prosecutor? Yes. And then the, the judge in the front, right? Yeah, judge and the clerk. Okay. Yeah, so that inside of that door, that's their domain. That's their ship. That's that that's called the bar. When you cross the bar. Mm -hmm. and so that belongs to them and if you go in there uninvited you're traversing their space basically like trespassing and so they're like they they had me go first because the uh the sitting judge was reading my case file of all the stuff that i had filed and was swallowing real hard and her face was like making weird distortions and like she was clear you could cut the tension in that in that room with a butter knife like it was very uh, unpleasant to be in there but I was excited I was like what are y'all gonna do and they're like Brendan Jones and I go he is present 
because they're they're talking about my straw man, my all cap name. And so they're like, please come over here. And I go, is court in session? And they don't answer me. And they say, we, I need you to come over here. I'm like, wait, before I cross this bar, I need to know if court is in session. And if so, are you inviting me in there as a special guest? And they're like, he's like, you can come over here if you want to. I said, I don't want to. But I'm asking you if I'm being invited in or not. And the judge interrupts and the judge, she's not a judge. The judge interrupts and says, yes, you're invited. And I go, okay. And I go in and I talk to him. He goes, so it looks like you have two cases of resisting arrest. I wanted to know what you're going to do about that. I'm like, well, I'm here to settle the matter. I'm not sure what that question means. And he's like, well, we want to know if you were going to enter a plea or if you wanted to take this to trial. I said, I don't want to enter a plea and I don't want to take this to trial. I tried to, I tried to settle this matter on paper before any of this even began, but y'all failed to communicate and decided to kidnap me instead. And they were just like, well, are you going to get an attorney or are you going to represent yourself? I'm like, I'm not representing myself. I'm representing the fictional entity you have on this piece of paper. And I've said on the affidavit, I'm coming in as a third party special intervener, non-accommodating to the events. I'm not accommodate. I'm not an accommodating party. I'm not part of whatever y'all are charging this fictional entity with. Okay, whatever novel y'all got going on, I'm not a character in that. I'm just here to represent the 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 character in the novel because y'all are making me come here under threat and duress. Otherwise, you're going to kidnap me again. And so he goes, okay, so you want to represent yourself? I'm like, look, if y'all are not going to have a hearing, then I'm going to leave. <laughs> and she, you know, the woman tells me you can only either come in pro se, which means you're coming in as the straw man, or you can have an attorney represent you. Those are your only two options. I said, according to what? She said, according to Texas criminal law. And I go, you mean the Texas Code of Criminal Procedure, right? The statutory procedure, which applies to employees of Texas and the United States. And he, she goes, no, I'm talking about you. You, you know, and I go, okay, who is you? She said, you. Or she didn't point at me, she just said, you. I go, I don't know who you're talking about. Can you point to this person? And she goes, I'm not going to engage with you in these affairs. I'm like, yeah, I'm sure you're not. So am I free to go or not? And they're like, yeah, we rescheduled your hearing for the 14th. I'm like, all right, very good. You'll be getting a bill from me because this is a waste of my time. And I walk out and I have someone recording it. And in the recording, I will tell you what, here's what he quoted. So can you still hear me? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just going over to what he told me, okay? Yeah. So Judge Soros is my judge, okay? And it's supposed to be. The woman there, I don't know her name. I'm going to find that out. But they said when I left, tell Judge Soros to have a judge magistrate on the 12th. Who's going to be there? Oh, Judge Mitchell, yeah. I'm sure Judge Soros is going to be on vacation that day also. <laughs> they were very nervous talking to me, dude. They didn't want the sauce. And so um, this is, I've dedicated my life to this because I've helped many people with their, you know, dealing with court. I'm very polite. I'm not a rude man. I, and I don't go in fighting people or trying to, you know, cause a controversy. I just want to settle the matter and I'm looking for remedy. And so we're in a place right now where the judiciary, the monetary system, this whole thing is falling apart. My spiritual master calls it the um, oppressive trade system. And it's a very good phrase. And that stems, and I don't want to get too deep, but 
it stems from our identification with our bodies. Ultimately, this whole name game and like threatening to throw you in jail and money and all this stuff, it all has to do with the body, right? The body needs food, shelter, it needs companionship, it needs certain things. And the courts and the, the today system is threatening to revoke that from you. And because you think your happiness comes from the body, it puts you in a state of fear and makes you afraid to do anything in regards to it. But if you realize you're really the soul inside of the body, then whatever they do to the body doesn't matter. Okay, they beat my ass in jail. Okay, they beat me up. They fed me absolute garbage. They gave me poisonous water. They threw me in solitary confinement. They took my family away. They did everything. But I'm still happy because all that is temporary anyway. Very soon I will die. Very soon I will be dead. And then where will I go? This body very soon will be ashes. So it's not that important. What's most important is re like connecting to our soul identity. We are really children of God. God is real. God has a strong, great personality that is beyond our conception of the normal human personality. And we can have a relationship with that being. And so one of the reasons I do this work is because they go hand in hand. When you realize that the courts are acting in a spiritual nature also, why the judge wears all black, they go all rise, telling the dead to rise, right? They go through this ceremony where they go through your bench. You go through these doors, right? They have like a back door. The judge has their chambers, right? Just like the captain of a ship has chambers, just like the clerical or the pope. When he would go talk to God, he would go into the back and go talk to God and then come out and tell you, yeah, God's not too happy with you. If you give us some money, though, then he won't be mad at you anymore. You know, the same idea. It's all ritualistic spiritual behavior. Yeah. And so if you could realize that, you could separate your emotions away from it and actually become very successful. Now, I don't claim to be a huge success, but in terms of business and finance, I have never been more free in my life. I can do anything, right? I can, like, I don't have to buy regular insurance anymore. I have silver. I bond myself in my own insurance. Okay, I don't got to register my car anymore. I can record it with the county as my property, not belonging to the government. And you can do this with so many things. But this is how I got involved in all this. And now my, you know, main goal is to help the people as much as I can. I do all of it by donation. I don't do any of it for profit because I don't want people to be charged something. I want them to willingly give. And that's my philosophy. You know, yeah. I don't want you to feel obligated to pay. Me. I want you to be willingly contribute because that's going to actually benefit you in the long run. So that's my story in a nutshell of how I got, you know, into all this. <laughs> And it's a great story, man. I'm mind blown by everything you shared with me. I'm sure the people here are going to be too. Uh, I mean, you're you're really one of those, uh, the rebel few, as one of my mentors says. Like understanding that there's there's more to what we are able to perceive with our eyes, right? Like hum humanity. I, I love the from the beginning, like the, everything you said before the the hitting the recording button button um and even i asked you this question on one of the you know before jumping like what word describes you and you said happy even though you've <laughs> i mean i can see it you already said it like you uh, separate the emotions from everything where does the name balaram das come from that was given to me by my spiritual master so the word balaram means the power of god and so I serve the power of God. Balaram also means the king of the plow. And one of the, my missions is to start cow protection farms and food growing farms around the world. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And because that's the main issue, right? Right now, all of our basic needs are being controlled by an outside someone we've never met. Yeah. Right? If, if something happens to gasoline, or something happens to vehicles, trucks can't move gas, or can't move food, everyone in the city is pretty much dead. Yeah. So, like, you know, not to get too dark, but right. <laughs> um, but Balaram Das essentially means a servant of God. 
Sounds great. It's phenomenal. Is that a, a certain language? The yeah, that's the Sanskrit language. So I'm a part of the what people may know as the Hare Krishnas. Okay. Those people who chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And it means, oh, infinite, glorious Lord, I am embarrassed by my material condition. Please engage me in your loving, blissful, eternal, devotional service. Because service is what makes us happy, right? That's why you see all, you know, just for an example, a lot of women today, if they're single, you can bet they either got a dog or they got plants because they all serve something. Men too. If men don't have a woman, right, they have a job where they're helping and serving other people or, you know, they're taking care of their family or something. We all have a propensity to serve. Yeah. And so that's what really makes us happy. And so that is... I, I want, my life is very out in the open. You know, I want people to know what I do, what I think and how I live. And any money people give me is going towards that program. Uh, and we're almost there. I'm really, I'm using a lot of it to stack silver because silver is about to skyrocket. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe in future episodes, we could talk about more specific topics like the, the economy or the fight, like how money works. I can explain really easy how money works today, um, how the big cryptocurrency, where that's going, um, the court system, of course, um, trust law and law, how, why is law important? You know, certain sciences, the cosmology of everything, the study of spiritual scripture and things like this. But this is, this is all this information. My goal is to push this out full time. So I was really excited to get on this podcast because I want more people to just know, you know, you're not the body, man. You're the soul. And once you remember that, it doesn't matter what happens. You're good. <laughs> uh, I'm super pumped. I'm, I'm seriously, I got no words. I'm, I'm speechless from everything from your story and from all the knowledge you got, really. Like when I found out um, about the Federal Reserve being a private entity, and I started digging about how money works, how JP Morgan, you know, Chase, all these banks and all that good stuff. But my brain boiled down, really. And I just wanted more people to learn about it. And, you know, there was a point where I realized, OK, just knowing all of this won't help me change the world the way I would want it, you know. But at least being aware of these things sets me in a position like yours right where you you're not abused where you know how to handle your situations and all and more importantly how to handle your emotions in those situations right so thank you for sharing everything that you shared i know we we we, we are over 20 30 minutes i don't know so that's we okay. may leave it. go ahead i mean that's fine you yeah. know it happens I mean, it's for the viewership, right? I, I don't want I don't want them to be too long any, anyway, but I, I want to invite you on another podcast uh, in the future and, and just bring you on and share more about the, the actual things that you help people with, okay? Sure. Let me ask you, Adolfo, where is your podcast? Is it, where do you, where do you stream it? Yeah, so we're going to be sharing this on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube. Once it's on YouTube. Very good. Yeah. And, and we're going to be sharing more, you know, updating people like we're going to uh, have some social media campaigns so they know and we, we're going to share it with you so you can share it with your audience or with your friends. You know? Very good. Yes, I will. Perfect. All right. So where can people find you again before we let you go? So you can find me. I'm predominantly right now. I'm active on Facebook. Um, you can find me. My name's Balaram Das, B-A-L-A-R-A-M-D-A-S, or um, facebook.com slash brendan.jones267 is like the, the, or like the at, you know, the, the tag. Yeah, we're going to put then, it out below anyway, so people can just yeah. click them. And then you can find me on, um, man, what else do I use? Um, you can... I have a business line that you can text. Now I do ask serious inquiries. You know, if you, a lot of people just ask me, how do I discharge debt? How do I buy a car and not pay it? 
all this stuff. If you're going to ask me these questions, please, there's some YouTube videos I can send you to that will answer all those. Um, but if you're serious, you can get on my business line at 817-381-8531. Shoot me a text, please. I get so many calls every day. Um, I really don't, I can't answer all of them. And then you can send me an email at the real credit repair experts at gmail.com. And then I also am on YouTube. Um, my channel's name is Souls Kitchen. S-O-U-L-S apostrophe kitchen. So you'll see me at my head bald on the, the picture. And that's where I have my YouTube video of me when I first, like about a week after I got my dad out of jail. And then I upload, you know, I have some, some uploads pertaining to that child custody case I was dealing with, as well as uh, classes and updates from my mentor and myself. And those are the predominant places where I'm active right now. Soon I'm going to have my subscribe star up and be your own business.org website up. Um, I really should hire someone to do that because I'm really just like all over the place. But yeah, that's where I'm at right now. That, that's where you can contact me right now. Perfect. Wonderful. So we're going to have all those social links down below. You guys can check the, check them out and just reach out to Vadaram and find out more about his story or if you want help with your business cases or your law cases, whatever it is, reach out, find out, right? Always ask the people who have the experience more than just the degrees and all that good stuff. Not bashing on that, not at all. Just make right. sure you know that experience is more powerful all the time. Absolutely. The sit-in judge I was with today, she's probably a couple of years fresh out of law school, you know? Yeah. <laughs> he was like, I don't want anything to do with you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, that's crazy i'm not even gonna get it we're not getting to that but thank you Balaram. thank you for sharing your time i appreciate everything you do man i'm mind boggled again I, I won't stop repeating it so thank you we'll see you in another one you take care bye 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 guys see you later. Bye.